Hello again. Back to the future of space exploration now and perhaps the ultimate prize, putting people on Mars. NASA recently updated the world on its plans to go to the red planet in the next 20 years. And this week, the SpaceX billionaire Elon Musk unveiled his plans, as he put it, to make human beings a multi-planet species. Well, you saw a little of what he had to say in our report at the start of the show. Here's a little more. I mean, first of all, why go anywhere, right? Um, the, I, I think there, there are really two fundamental paths. History is going to bifurcate along two directions. One, one, one path is we stay on Earth forever, um, and then there will be some eventual extinction event. Um, I, I don't have an immediate doomsday prophecy, but there's, it's eventually history suggests there will be some, some doomsday event. Uh, the alternative is to become a space-faring civilization and a multi-planet species, which uh, I hope you would agree that is the right way to go. Yes? <laughs> so this is a flight through of the, the crew compartment. I just want to give you a sense of what it would feel like to, to actually be in the spaceship. Um, I mean, in order to make it appealing, um, and, and increase that portion of the Venn diagram where people who actually want to go. Um, it's got to be really fun and exciting, um, and it, it can't feel cramped or, um, or boring. So uh, the, the, crew, the crew compartment or the occupant compartment is set up so that you can do zero-G games, you can float around. Uh, there'll be like movies, uh, lecture halls, um, you know, cabins, um, a restaurant. It'll be like really fun to go. You're going to have a great time. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a challenge to, to fund this, this whole endeavor. Um, uh, we, we do expect to generate um, pretty decent uh, net, net cash flow from launching lots of satellites and servicing the space station from NASA, transferring cargo to and from the space station. Um, and, um, and then uh, I know that there's, there's a lot of people in, in the private sector who are interested in helping fund a, a base on Mars, um, and then perhaps there will be uh, interest on, on, on the government sector side to also do that. Um, ultimately, this is going to be uh, a huge uh, public-private partnership. Well, still with us is space journalist Sarah Kradas and the professor of planetary science and astrobiology, Ian Crawford. Uh, so, listening to Elon Musk, he now says he's going to get humans to Mars as early as 2022, which is three years ahead of his previous estimate. What, what do you think about that? So I'm very uh, supportive of what Elon Musk is trying to do, ultimately. I think his time scale, yes, that is a very ambitious time scale. I, I would just caution slightly that there is still quite a lot we don't know about Mars. We haven't yet had any samples returned from Mars for study on the Earth. We don't even definitely know yet that Mars doesn't have any life of its own, which it might do. It seems increasingly yeah, we unlikely. we barely just got the curiosity but we don't on, know on that. Mars, so. Uh, so, so, yeah, I would argue um, it's slightly premature to send people to Mars until we know a little bit about the, more so about the Martian environment. It's not just a rich but, guy's pipe dream, then? Well, 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 well to, to a degree, I think, with Elon Musk, it, it is. But, but, but his dream's in the right place, right? It's important that we have people <laughs> who have these dreams pu pushing us outwards. And I'm not at all opposed to sending people to Mars. I can see the tremendous advantages of sending people to Mars. It's just that I think before we were to do that responsibly, there is a case for continuing to explore Mars and learn a little bit more about it first. I would just say, though, that there is an intermediate step, right? The, the Earth has a natural satellite. Uh, there is, we have the Moon, which is also a scientifically very exciting place to explore. And the way I see this potentially panning out is we can develop our capabilities in space by exploring the Moon first, and that will, a lot of scientific and engineering advantages and technical advantages will come from that. And then when we're ready, once we know enough about Mars, once we've convinced ourselves that Mars actually doesn't have any life of its own, if, if it doesn't, then we've got this capability that we've developed on the Moon that we can then send people to Mars. So I, I just think that's a slightly more logical It all sounds like to, to exciting stuff. It's interesting that the Moon is suddenly figuring again, because the Moon uh, is seen as something we've done. Been there, well, done that. The Moon, the moon landings with Apollo was political. It was about saying, you know, between two superpowers, look, 
we can do a big thing well. And America's big thing, Russia's big thing was to try and send a man to the moon. Um, that's why the Apollo missions didn't continue. But what's interesting is that actually if we had continued at the same rate of technology and aspiration that we did with Apollo, I mean, it's certainly not beyond the realms of possibility that we could have got to Mars, humans on Mars, but by the 80s, perhaps even the 1990s. And that's people like Buzz Aldrin, you know, one of the first people to walk on the moon saying that. And Mars, Mars has always been a, a goal for humanity. I mean, we may potentially find life there. There is, it is right to have a degree of caution in terms of exploration. Many scientists would be happy with robotic missions, finding out more about that, improving well, robotics. NASA has said that it wants to send But NASA has said for a long time well. that they want to send missions to Mars, but we, we haven't actually had... We've had a lot of talk, but we haven't got anywhere uh, as yet. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It will happen What's within the this century. What's the I mean, you, you well, said you saw the, the advantage of sending people to Mars. We've got the Mars One um, project, which says it wants to establish we, a colony Mars, of humans on, on Mars. Mars used to be a lot warmer and wetter. Mars is um, probably the most similar to Earth out of all the planets. And even if we find nothing on Mars, it's the next step in terms of exploring further into our solar system. I mean, as I said, humans are built to go over the hill and they're built to explore what is not the big attraction in Mars, what is not the big attraction in actually stepping out further into our solar system. But it's not just a question of getting to Mars, is it? I mean, we have to learn how to live on Mars. So I think, I think this is, I think you see Elon's, the motivations are, are correct. I mean, Elon Musk is correct. Ultimately, if humanity is to have a really long-term future, we will have to become a multi-planet species. We can't, if we just stay, have all our eggs on one basket, one planetary basket, eventually we are vulnerable to, to natural or man-made Events. We've so, done so, a pretty good job of ruining one planet. Oh, so no, but this is. I think, Mars, no, no, but I think I think that's slightly, uh, slightly, um, slightly. Um, how should we say? <laughs> slightly spurious way of viewing it. The reason we should be very careful with our own planet and why the environmental movement is so correct that we should be much more careful than we are is because we share this planet with other living things we can damage the habitats we are damaging the habitats of other things other beings that we share this planet with that's not true of the moon it's not true of asteroids and it's probably not true of mars but we should find out <laughs> before we're too gung-ho about it so human expansion into the solar system actually won't harm anybody else whereas what we're doing on the earth is so i see these as quite different things that the there isn't uh, the, the ethical case I think um, right. is, is different I, I think the whole thing is an amazing illustration of, of what we as humans want to achieve and, and the the level of our ambition there are hundreds of thousands of people applying for the Mars one yeah. uh, trip even though it could be a one-way trip it, the Mars one thing you know, not to talk down about any idea to explore space, because it's always good to have these ideas and to keep space in the mainstream agenda. Mars 1 probably isn't going to happen. I mean, they haven't got a concrete plan. It's not to say it absolutely won't happen, but I think there's more to us. We are just this one and we're planet in this one solar this system. Kind of we are, and most of them will fail. 99.9% .9 of these ideas will probably fail, but it's the ones which succeed, as we've seen throughout history, which will actually change things in ways we can't even imagine yet. So that's what's so exciting about space exploration, because we can't imagine what is next to come, and that's what's hugely exciting, and it will improve life on Earth. It will improve technology. It will improve the way we can help climate change and understand climate change. So it is a hugely exciting time. So, Ian, million dollar question when do you think humans will get to Mars I think humans probably could get to Mars in the mid 2030s but I think it would be preferable if we as for reasons I've stated if we went to return humans to the moon first developed up a real capability there so that we were confident in the technology that we know we can keep people alive on hostile planetary surfaces it would make a Mars mission much safer I think if we went via the moon first and if we did that I'd like to see people on the back on the moon by the early 1930s and perhaps people on Mars by the middle of the century and if we can get to Mars, we can get anywhere. Thank you both very much indeed for joining me. Really interesting discussion. Sarah Crudas and Ian Crawford. Now, we end with our insight bite. A little something we feel you should know. Bringing space technology to Earth, a rocket motor and parts of a spaceship have been used to build the Bloodhound supersonic car. It's set to break world land speed records. So, if you're not quite ready to take a trip to Mars, maybe a ride in this car will do. And that's all for now. I'm Shuli Ghosh, and that was Insight.